Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market and Deli. Tonight's special guest that we have with us, and it's always an honor, we have Dr. Ryan Bland, and he is a DC and functional medicine practitioner speaking on the topic of the power of detoxification for cellular rejuvenation and has some really amazing insights to share with us tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Bland. Thank you for having me. It is amazing uh, to be in alignment with Marlene's Market. And I want to give the message to everyone right up front that we need to support local businesses. If you need supplements, you need some food, go to Marlene's. If you, I also have a supplement store and in honor of Marlene doing 15%. So you can go to my website at drryanbland.com and you can click my online supplements and type in the code Marlene's 15. That's Marlene's 15 for 15% 15 off for the next week. Um, in honor of, uh, being a guest. So I think that's really, really important. Um, and to start, I would like to say where you can find me. Uh, so we don't have to all the way wait to the end. So it's, you know, just in case. So it's drryanbland.com. You could find me at Dr. Ryan, at Dr. Ryan Bland on Instagram. And Instagram has been a little difficult. So I had to make a new one. So add my new Instagram called Bland Family Wellness. Uh, I also would like to let everybody know out there um, that I have an open door policy in my clinic. And this means that I give free 15 minute discovery calls to anybody that sees this or anybody in the world ever that wants to know more about their health or how I can possibly help them. So I've introduced myself a little bit. Let's go a little bit deeper. My name is Dr. Ryan Bland. And I am a second generation applied kinesiologist and chiropractic specialist. And I'm here today to give everybody an unhinged second opinion on health and the reality that surrounds it while doing a deep dive on cellular detoxification and inflammation. And it's really important to examine health and healthcare. And a lot of people I see try to go on these journeys. I see many patients come here before they're trying to do it themselves. Um, and if you think about all of the greatest athletes, because you know, all of us can really see performance in athletes uh, in history, all of the greatest athletes are coaches. So why don't you have somebody on your side to protect your greatest asset in life, which is your health? Now, a lot of people live their lives and they're not quite aware of what's going on with their health because they're not being educated. So pain and how you feel does not really equate to your level of, of health. How you feel is only being transmitted by up to 5% of your nerve fibers. Rest of the 95% of your nerves are doing completely different things. So no symptoms that you have good health. Good health is just not the absence of disease. We also need to have an absence of dysfunction within the body because what we do in holistic healthcare is a lot of prevention as well. So we want to get the patients healthy and then we want to prevent whatever is going on to make sure it never happens again. Now, I saw a quote recently online and it made me uncomfortable. And I'm old enough and wise enough to know that when you're uncomfortable, it's time to sit down, take a deep breath and learn something. So it said, doctor, the doctor says, don't confuse your Google search with my medical degree. And the patient says, don't confuse your one hour lecture on my condition with 20 years of living with it. And I've seen things kind of back and forth um, with this sentiment. And um, the doctor is the teacher in this case. So the doctor needs to take responsibility. Um, I was so triggered by this and so uncomfortable. I meditated. I thought my head was going to blow up. Um, and it re I realized that it's time to make a change, no matter what kind of doctor you are and how you're treating your patients. 
because the goal with each patient is to develop trust and love in the center and navigating their healthcare together with patient education. And most patients aren't doctors. So it's up to the doctor to just keep hitting the nail on the head and reminding the patient and telling the patient and showing the different medias and research articles that are out there based on what's going on, having a real relationship with your patient rather than just scribbling something on a notepad and shoving some pills down somebody's throat. Um, and unfortunately, mainstream uh, science, they use diagnosis and they categorize your entire soul experience and identity with this diagnosis to the rest of your life. But they also tell you all the diseases that you're currently having are uncurable. And I don't necessarily agree with this. There are some things that we born with and some things that we live through our life. But for the most part, after being in practice for 10 years, I haven't really seen a condition that I couldn't at least alleviate some of the discomfort with some just a little bit of work. Um, and something that I was talking about earlier um, <clears throat> before the podcast here is the saddest thing that I see right now is patients can't even get into their doctors. There are people suffering in this community and elsewhere in America, and they can't get into a specialist. They can't get a referral. The referrals are six months. You got to get uh, into the next doctor, to the next doctor. Then you have to wait for your labs. Then you have to wait to get back in to view your labs. And it's like an absolute headache. And I'm seeing uh, patients who are on medications for their entire life, just like not being able to get their refills on simple medications. And this is kind of where I've been coming into play in people's lives. Um, and what I do with expediency and great honor to the community is I get on the case as fast as I can and I order the patients whatever they want because it's your health care, it's your money, it's your life. You have to live with it. So you got to ask yourself, how long are you going to stay in a toxic relationship? Ask yourself, why is your naturopath or MD not feel, uh, fulfilling your uh, prescriptions? How natural is that? Why aren't they sending for referrals? Why are they questioning patient from getting further care? Why am I able to call these offices and get these patients in within a week or two? rather than three months, six months, nine months. It's because I love and care for this community and I actually advocate and care for my patients and they're not numbers. And I'm not looking to, I'm not looking at them as dollar signs. I'm looking at them as human beings and men and women and children that need help. So I want people to take a, a second and take a minute of, and count how many times has the medical allopathic model maybe let you down or your family? Um, and the attitude from the quote, you know, the doctor versus patient quote, it just makes so much sense. Like if I was a patient, I would be disgruntled too. I would be mad even seeing me because I would just be blanking. I, all doctors are, are, are bad. Um, and a lot of people come in and they, they have this shield against the doctors. And we need to break that down and really work together on a on an even plane and build some trust together. And I understand why people wouldn't trust a person with the, uh, uh, the prefix doctor in front of their name. And one amazing example, I don't want to get too heavy, but it's heavy, is the opioid crisis. They let the Sackler family make hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars without any repercussions. And it pretty much destroyed our whole, whole nation. It's uh, the it's 80% the causes of death between 18 and 44 in America is overdose. Um, and you still think the medical model is protecting you. You still want to, you know, go to your doctor and take it, beg for an antibiotic and get an appointment. Um, at this point, you know, people are still totally like they're gods. And now, like I, I always say, there's a 95-5. Medical doctors are a one-trick pony. 95% of the time, health is you, preventative measures. 5% of the time, emergency, go get the surgery. Don't mess around if your appendix exploded or something horrible has happened to you, God forbid, knock on wood. Um, 
But it's true that these doctors are only trained, most of them, unfortunately, in treating the sickest people. Um, and they look at labs and, you, you know, a lot of these people are being referenced Again, 350 million sick Americans who two thirds are obese and close to diabetes. So most of the people watching this may some be in, in that realm, but others should not be compared to those populations. And that's part of what I do is I educate you based on who you are and what makes you, you, your cellular individuality. And we figure out what do these things even mean? Because the other side of it is I see so many people that are having such a hard time making sense of this all. Because what is common right now in our country is absolutely not normal. And I want to say that one more time so it really sinks in. What is common right now is definitely not normal. And what is happening in healthcare is absolutely insane. Medical error is literally the third leading cause of death in America. So I feel really comfortable expressing to everybody right now that I don't care if you choose me. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you hate me. But I think it's time that everybody at least go see a holistic practitioner once a year, twice a year. My recommendation would be at best four times a year. Just to check in. Your health, like I said, is your greatest asset. Why are you messing around with it? The medical model is a sick care model. So you have to be sick to get any attention. And there's usually no preventative care and little to no education on, in terms of patients. And that's really not their job. That's my job. So I think People need to realize that it's cool to have a doctor just in case something bad happens and you need an emergency. But you, if you care about your health and that's important to you, got to be working with somebody. Even as a doctor who takes many seminars and takes many credits in nutrition, I have doctors. I don't do a detox protocol because I think it's cool or I saw something I liked. I see something I like and I talk about it with my own doctor. Um, because it's really not healthy to treat yourself. That's a really poor doctor-patient relationship when it's doctor-doctor treating himself or patient-patient treating themselves. Um, so to get into detox a little bit, we're getting into a point in history where the toxins and chemicals and xenobiotics, which are things that are not digested by our body, such as like heavy metals and the, the polyfluoral alkanes on all of the plastic, our, our bodies cannot handle these things. And um, we're coming to a point where people have extreme levels of uh, allergy, reactivity, and autoimmune. And you could look at doc, the good old Dr. Fauci, the NIH, the WHO over the past 30 years. And just like the rise of all of these things is just straight up, like you're going up on the elevator in the Empire State Building, hundreds of floors are straight up. So the trends are showing us like whatever we're doing is just sucks. I'm sorry to use that word, but there's no, there's like, you got to use a, a blunt word sometimes. Um, and, you know, prevention is key while they see everything as not curable. So we are absolutely brainwashed. We are the only country where 90% of cable commercials on TV are literally pharmaceutical ads. And if it's not a pharmaceutical ad, it's about processed food. Um, I, I, this brings me back to a story as I digress. I was on a detox when I was in chiropractic school and I was home on vacation and I was eating a really specific diet. And I was at a friend's house and all the TV was playing was all these like burger and pizza commercials. And I literally was like, hey, look, gotta go. You can't watch this anymore because it, it's been like that. Um, it's interesting when you have a friend or you see people or, you know, I'm usually that friend doing healthy things. And I have other friends who might not be as into what I'm into and they're partying out, having cool burgers or whatever and Chick-fil-A French fries partying down. Uh, they're like, dude, you're eating a lot of steak and butter. 
you know, it's, it's almost demonized to be healthy or like a weirdo. Uh, if you go against the grain and you're like, no, Chick-fil-A is just not for me. Um, but when you think about it, a lot of this country, most people are, that I see, uh, are on three or more medications at once. And this stems from all ages. It's not just, you know, older people, you know, who've lived hard lives. I'm, I keep seeing younger and younger people. Now, I'm a big, I'm a, as I digress, once again, big fan of classic cars. I own two classic uh, race cars and they're over 30 years old. Now, I, I use the parts, but can you replace your parts? They can, they're kind of good at taking them out. But replacing them, it's like a little bit of a difficulty. It's not so great. So how do you stop the rust in your body? Well, you got to detox. And how much should you detox four times a year is a decent amount. And we're going to get deeper into what that means and what detox is and different things. But I want to go more into the why. Why would you need to detox? So the common ground in modern society is you just look at stress, 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 stress. Health is multiple. So we look at stress. And what does stress affect? Fight or flight. Now, this is a very chiropractic, neurological conversation. Fight or flight is stress. Parasympathetic is rest, digest, feed, and breed. All the good things that make us heal and feel great. Now, if we're in this society and, you know, you're getting lack of sleep, you're in excess caffeine intake, you're drinking alcohol, um, you know, you're eating sugary foods, you're engaged in toxic relationships, you don't make time for yourself, you don't exercise enough. This causes adrenal stress. And I really believe that the adrenals and the stress are the pretty much a big culprit in our reality today. And what happens are is the adrenals become weaker and weaker. And when they become weak, you have less hormone output. So you become absolutely fatigued. Your immune system will drop. At that point, metals, chemicals, viruses, bacteria, parasites, pathogens, all of the above, they come right in. And do people know about this? No. Did your medical doctor talk about this? Absolutely not. It's always the weird chiropractor, right? So you have to realize that there are three phases of adrenal stress. There's alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. Exhaustion is obviously the worst. And I would say that 85% of my patients are in this absolute exhaustion phase where it seems that they've tried a hardcore diet, but sometimes trying a hardcore diet will drain your adrenals more. They ice baths. Well, that's going to raise your sympathetic nervous system, even though it's a good practice for a lot of people. And it's going to take you the other way. And they try all of these things. And it's even shocking their adrenal system because people like to pull the Band-Aid off. They don't like and don't understand how to use a kind and gentle approach. So let's define what detox even is, because I, I, uh, I think it's important to even talking about. So we'll have some agreement uh, on the topic. So detox, I wrote this down, is the process of metabolizing substances in a person's system to neutralize the toxic effects of their environment and eliminations of these materials from the body. Now, when I see doctors, naturopaths, and some other holistic practitioners I think they are predominantly using some of the herbs and vitamins and minerals incorrectly, just as a medical doctor would. They aren't treating the root cause. They're trying to use an herb to treat a symptom in place of pill, which is just not what I'm about. Um, a lot of these doctors also aren't really aware in, in the difference in quality in supplements. And I always go into this and I'm beating, I'm beating the horse here, but you know, a lot of people go on Amazon, they buy some stuff. There's been so many research articles that from Harvard to you name it, that have studied all of the different supplements. And most of the supplements you buy on Amazon or online 
are not safe. They're not efficacious. You go to a doctor. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to get supplements cheaper than Amazon at my office from an actual doctor or go to Marlene's. I don't care if you get it from me. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm not making any money doing this. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. Um, so go find somebody, find a doctor you like, if you don't like me, go to Marlene's, go, go call your local health food store. The fact of the matter is for me to access these supplements, I need to give my, my doctor license number. I need to give them my, my, uh, uh my license. I need to give them my business. Life. There is a lot that goes into it. So if you think you're getting an equal product to, uh, a, a small business like I'm bringing in or Marlene's is bringing in, you're being fooled. And a lot of the times uh, I'm proven right. I have had many patients actually wind up in the hospital playing silly games, not listening to my advice. Who would have thought, right? And, you know, they want, they want to save five bucks. This guy said, you know, I, you know, if I bought it the first time I could get, 10% off. And this guy is mega, mega bucks. So I don't understand the, 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 I said, Hey, $5 is $5. Like if you wanted to try it out, I'd give it to you for free rather than knowing that you're going to hurt yourself. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that let's take a, a great supplement like Camu Camu, which is a vitamin C. It's really good to, for immune system. Well, one company might use the actual fruiting flower. One company might use the stem. One company might use the leaves. Is that an equal product? No, absolutely not. It's absolutely not. So some of these companies are, you know, using, you know, waste products of these plants and calling them something. And then you move to the encapsulation process. There's silicone dioxide, magnesium stearate, uh, which are all like, if you're taking uh, an enzyme and it has magnesium stearate in it, it's a gut disruptor. It's going to give you a stomach ache. So it, it's a lot of these supplements seem like a good idea, but the encapsulation process is horrendous. And a lot of these companies are not FDA regulated, which is absolute, just like do whatever you want. Wild, wild west, bang, bang, shoot them up. No rules, no regulations, no bedtime whatsoever. So I think it's important that when you're working with a practitioner that you talk to them about what kind of supplements they have. Did your doctor talk to you about that? No, every medical doctor says, oh, just, go to the just get the good old vitamin C, uh, you know, get the vitamin D. You know, these supplements are not made equal. Like I said, a lot of them are derived from bacteria, fungus, mold, GMO. Most vitamin C is GMO citric acid from the fungus of like corn or something. It's it's disgusting. Like, you know, you want to be healthy, you know, you're better off just eating an orange if you're going to, you know, not be responsible, practice this radical responsibility and find somebody to source you pharmaceutical grade supplements directly from the source. Because if you're buying them from Amazon, you're not buying them from the health food store or a doctor, your guess is as good as mine. They could have been won on storage wars, and they a lot of these things are relabeled to show you a different expiration date. And I don't think a lot of practitioners out there really have any idea what they're doing. As I see, many patients in the past 10 years come in with just bags of supplements. Usually, the, uh, the and the more supplements a patient comes in with, the sicker I know they are because I know that they have been desperate enough to try so many different things and spend so much money on all of these different items that they thought could be a good idea. Um, so it's really important to, to note that if you look at somebody and you talk, talk to people, we all inherently want to do good. We all inherently want to be healthy. You know, if you have a, a nice car you want to take a, a take a picture of it if you have a nice outfit on it's clean you you want to take a picture of it um and it's interesting because a lot of us we use we cover it up we make up and colognes and deodorants and you know we i don't think people realize that a lot of their daily this is um they're covering up covering up detoxification they're covering up what's going on how can they really connect? Like, oh my God, my armpits stink. Like uh, there must be something going on. I'm detoxing from something. 
Um, so it's really interesting how we cover up and collect these things. And I think we've like almost developed like like a humor um, towards eating poorly and not taking care of our bodies. Like, oh my God, chicken nuggets, macaroni and cheese. Like, you know, and everything's like a joke and we laugh about it. But sometimes you're like, wh what you laugh at is a really good indication of the truth. And sometimes your laugh is really a cry. And uh, I see that a lot. Uh, I try not to point it out too much. Um, but the real you, under all of the facades and what's supposed to look good and what's supposed to smell good, or good, the real you wants to be clean. And the real you seeks a deeper connection with your body because inherently we know that we want to be good and that's what's right. There are some bad people, though, on the planet. It's just what it is. Uh, but most of us, 95.5, 95% of us want to want to be great and, and clean. So like I said, unfortunately, as time progresses, the complex patient comes in and they continue to get younger and younger and younger at an alarming rate. Um, and the attitude, like I was saying before, that people have towards doctors is so negative that it's keeping patients from getting to honest and good doctors because it's just so exhausting to lose over and over again. Um, but there are plenty of people like me treating, uh, you know, a, a large amount of with extreme amount of efficacious procedures that get results and get results quick. I think that people um, need expediency in the society, but we also kind of need to realize that the body needs to heal and it takes time. All processes take time. So I guess what I'm proposing today kind of is the future of healthcare as we know it, because it's enough. We can talk, we can make fun of people all day. We can talk bad about the medical model, but what are we going to do? We're here. Let's do, let's do it. So most haven't been to a holistic doctor. So it's time to maybe try something new and different. Um, there are a lot of people like me with ex an extreme amount of experience. Um, and I am actually a second generation practitioner of what's called applied kinesiology, which is a fantastic way to help patients make full recoveries and detox. So applied kinesiology is literally a diagnostic system that uses manual muscle testing and other standard methods and modern methods of diagnosing, including labs. We use uh, orthopedic, neurological, and visceral uh, evaluations to evaluate the patient um, and the nervous system and how the nervous system responds to the sensory input and challenges that are going on in the person's environment. And what's really special compared to your medical doctor is each treatment is individualized for the patient to help restore their health. Because the power that made the body can heal the body. We just need to make sure that there's no interference. So applied kinesiology is exceptional. One of the best things I think at identifying organ and organ systems that are out of balance. And we need to, at this point, assess for nutrient and mineral status to create, to correct mineral deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies to support with detoxification. Because as you detox, you're pulling many different chemicals and things out of different pathways. You might be using tons of B vitamins or, you know, you might need to support the liver or use a binder. So, you know, using these assessments is very imperative to determine what the body is telling us. So the muscle testing can also tell us what areas of the body are out of balance. It can identify the exact the exact amount of what specific nutrient, mineral, and herb that is needed to identify the blockages within your body's energy and organ meridians, take the guesswork out of dosages and saving people time, money, and giving you your health back, which is what you deserve. So together with comprehensive history, history no one likes filling out their intake forms, 
uh, a very thorough examination. I can't, I, I, I think I'm one of the only doctors in the world sometimes that actually does like an examination where like I like touch things and move things and I listen to your heart, like a real old school doctor i don't understand like when i go to the when i i went to the med i got a medical doctor just to get a primary care when i got here the guy like said like hey how you doing gave me like a pound and that was it he didn't listen to my heart uh the nurse who took my blood pressure told me i was 120 over 80 never been 120 over 80 um you know and it's funny being a doctor going to the doctor not letting the doctors know you're the doctor and and making the commentary in your head like i can't believe how much these people suck they're terrible this is like evil like they they shouldn't even come to work today you know um so back to ak so um all of these comprehensive histories um examinations blood chemistries other labs give us all of the information and confidence to create balance, homeostasis, correcting all of these things that are contributing to your current illness or disease. So the testing will identify a myriad of things. It'll test what kind of foods you need to eat. What kind of uh, detoxification does your digestive system need? What kind of detoxification does your musculoskeletal system need? Your endocrine system and other key organs and glands. So I like both kinds of testing. I use applied kinesiology because it's palpable. The patient feels when something makes them weak. Now, not everybody loves it. And sometimes people need to see black and white labs. Labs are great. But this applied kinesiology, there's a new term they call it frequency medicine. It's the same thing. I call it applied kinesiology. That's what it originally is. But this frequency medicine that we're doing, this applied kinesiology is four to five percent um, subclinical. So we can find if something is in dysfunction to four to five percent before you're having the symptoms. A lot of my patients who I see, I'm already they're already on the supplements before they get sick that they need, which is very interesting. So, and I find that we're really ahead of the curve. Now, a lab, you need 40 to percent dysfunction for the left show kind of funky uh, or kind of like, hey, this is higher, higher, low. And I can't tell you how many times I see crazy values, but I also can say there's a lot of times where people come in and they're not well and their labs say, fine. <laughs> and that's frustrating. And that's another frustrating thing to be like, I go to a doctor, I, you know, I I can't go to the bathroom. I can't wake up out of bed. Like I I can't remember anything. You know, poof, you know, there's there's no help being given, and their lab says that they're just absolutely perfect, and they're not. They're just they're not. Um, and it's there needs to be somebody like me to come in at that moment, and more medical doctors need to be more perceptive to what I'm doing and what other people like me are doing so that we can work together so that they can maybe do a little bit better of a job and they have less burden. There's no reason to be a hero. Everybody needs different kinds of treatments. Doctors have 10 hours of nutrition in medical school. They have, let's say 10 hours, 10 whole hours of nutrition. Chiropractors have 300. I have been to at least 300 more postgraduates, 300 hours of extra postgraduate seminars. I'm at like 800 hours or something. I, you know, I take 30 credits a year minimum. Um, so our philosophy in how we treat is also extremely important. So you have to view your health very differently. So your nervous system is what transmits all of the information to your body. So if you had a perfect nervous system, it would be communicating perfectly to your body and your body would be almost working perfectly and you'd be in your best health. So you have to neurologically look at what's going on. And that's what applied kinesiology does is it's looking for neurological reactivity. It's not looking for how much mold or fungus or parasite is on the lab. It's looking to see if it's there because you know how bad those things are interfering when you're coming in and you don't feel well. So this philosophy of focusing on the neuro neurological 
functioning of the body is what makes my practice and my outlook extremely successful and make other and makes other people's pair uh, you know pale into comparison because of the philosophy and their belief systems we're not sick care we're health care we're here building up entire families so i say to people you know if you're sick and you're not getting better it could be, and this is a pearl right here, it could be your spouse or your house. We live in this uh, Pacific Northwest. Check out my fungal blog um, because we live in an area where there's a lot of fungus and mold. I watch houses go up all the time. I know plenty of people who build houses uh, and it's a it's there's a lot of stuff going on. I have a lot of patients who've, who've had to move and who have legally, I've helped them legally get out of their leases or you know certain situations. So it's really important to know and, and make note of that in this. But like I said, go onto my website and read my fungal blog so that you can take some steps to protect your house and your family, um, which is really, really important. Um, a couple of things you can do, uh, you can buy cedar wood and tea tree oil for Marlene's or myself, and you could diffuse that in your house. That'll kill the uh, mold and fungus in the air. Ozonators are really great. Um, one thing that I tell people all the time is, you know, everybody wants an expensive, you know, air doctor to clean the air. I love it. I have one. I get it. But what we need here is a dehumidifier. I've got three in my house and I pull about three gallons of water. Like I'm pouring these things out every day. So if that's in your environment, it's going your sheetrock, it's going into your insulation and, you know, it's causing mold spores. And I don't think people realize that it only takes greater than 45% humidity for mold to grow. You don't have to see it or smell it for it to be there. So I'm sorry I digressed, I'm having fun. Um, so like I said, the flow of the energy through your body and through your meridians is extremely important. It's not just about diet, it's not about supplements, it's about the three Ts, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. You need to balance these things. Um, and more and more often, I educate patients and they absolutely agree. They're like, oh my God. I like, I had one woman yesterday. She told me after her first visit, she went into a car and she started hysterically crying. And I was like, oh my God, that's horrible. And she's like, no, like whatever we did with, the, with all of the work and the adjustments, like I like felt connected to my body and I felt like I had the answer. And you know, that's why I do this. And she said she felt like she had the best experience at any doctor's office she's ever had. And that is the goal with each patient is I want people to come in here and I want to laugh. I want to cry. I want to celebrate. I want to, you know, I want to be hard on them. I want to do the full spectrum every session. Um and I think people are trusting me um because I hate gimmicks. I hate contraptions. I hate too much stuff. I only want to do what's useful and necessary. And we get results extremely quickly. So it's interesting that we're still in this like duality consciousness. And that's how we have to like communicate like, oh, your doctor didn't tell you this. Well, blah, 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 blah. Why? Why no? Um, but when you go online, you take everything with a grain of salt. You got to. Even me today, take me with a grain of salt. Don't trust me. Don't believe me. I don't care. Um, but I see so many people taking what they see online, literally bringing in all kinds of supplements. Like I said, the patient with the most supplements is the sickest or the scare or the most feared, the most fearful. And the internet is trying to sell you stuff and give you what I call, what um, I call sexy answers. You know, they show you, Oh my God, this is very a very promising product. Oh my God, it could relieve my back pain. You know, this helped this guy for you know his back pain is better than ten years, and they have a ten percent off discount. And uh, people run to the sexy answer. They try it, and they have absolutely no results. Um, and it's kind of a bummer because we all work really hard, and it's hard to waste your money these days. Um, but I don't understand why it's so hard for people to realize that you are an individual. Like what is cool about everybody isn't them trying to be like anybody else. 
what is really cool about me is me. What is really cool about you is you. And I don't want to be anybody else and neither should you. So I don't understand why people run to the keto camp or the this camp or the that camp. And it's okay to, to try these diets and do these things. But it's another thing to base like your like absolute identity on these things. So um, I think that people have forgotten that the power that made the body heals the body and this innate intelligence is governing the entire universe. And if you had no interference in your body, your body, you wouldn't need to think about cellular rejuvenation or detoxification. That's a problem of the modern world. That's not a, that's a new thing in, in reality. Um, so it's clear that we've chipped away at this idea um, of these fear-based mentalities and society giving us this like crazy idea of what normal is. So how do I look at these things? So I believe in what people are calling, I guess, toxic load theory. And, you know, you think of this bottle and as stress, lack of sleep, pathogens, toxins, metals, environment, poor relationships, things come up and then things spill out. And that's your toxic load. And whatever spill out is kind of your symptom. And that's what you're like, oh, I don't feel good. I have to fix this. But what's under there is a whole bottle filled of different things that we need to change. And uh, I think a lot of people's methodologies of detoxification is coming in, killing. Oh my God, I have mold. You have mold, you have candida, you have yeast. Let's kill it. How Western. <laughs> Let's just kill it. Uh, so why would you do that? Why would you go in and kill that? That seems to be, and that seems what injured and sick people do is they do, you know, if somebody hurts their shoulder, they're trying to throw their shoulder back into socket. Or if you're, oh, I have this yeast infection, I'm just going to take as much of this supplement and starve myself or do this crazy thing. Um, but if you go in and you just decide to kill the one thing you're looking for, like you're killing mold, you now have an open space where you've killed that mold which is why something else will now rush in. And this is why I despise a lot of naturopaths and cookie cutter protocols because they are based off of practice management group that are preying on your money and they give you 12 months protocols, month one, drainage, month two, uh, mold, month three, metals, month four. Why don't you treat for everything? Why are you leaving everything there? Why are you creating a space for other things to move in? Because as infections become chronic, we create biofilms. And biofilms change the game. And it explains a lot of what goes on and why people can't get rid of stuff. Because biofilms use what's called quorum sensing, which is like alien sensing. And it goes, hey, the parasite that's living in my knee or my gut all the way down there, you know, change into a ba bacteria or virus because the immune system's coming to get you. So the biofilms continue to make what was now chronic even more chronic. So I think there's a right time and place for certain detoxes. And sometimes you, some people like need a heavy handed detox for a reason, or they just, that's what they want. And I, you have to respect the patient's wishes. Um, but as the goal of a practitioner, I'm here to organize and create an experience. I'm not just here to like drop some stuff off and never, I'm here to really create an experience. Like I said, with trust and love, I, I don't, and like patients always message me. They say, Hey, I don't want to bug you. It's not bugging me. I like love what I do. Talk to me more. Ask me how I'm doing. Maybe, <laughs> you know, throw one of those in there. Um, but I traditionally like to use a more gentle approach to detox, which should feel invigorating and in an addition to your life, not a subtraction. Like I said, I want it to be an addition, not a subtraction. It doesn't detox and cellular health and this rejuvenation. It doesn't need to be a painful moment. So like I said, everybody is a biochemical individual. Everybody is detoxing from something different or different combinations of things. There's no such thing as a good food or a bad food. There's just what's good for you right now. These things should change. Um, 
And food sensitivities aren't usually a root cause. It's usually to the dysbiosis that goes in the body. The brain-gut connection is very, very serious. And if you have parasites or microbes, they create bacterial metabolites like ammonia, and that goes through the brain, and then you have leaky brain, and then you become foggy. And a lot of people, I see a lot of people with brain fog, and like, I don't even think they know. I have conversations with people all the time like young adults between 30 and 40, and they're like, I can't remember. <laughs> and they're sober and they're pretty healthy, but you can tell they might be living in a, in a home with mold or they might be in, in, you know, having some other exposure. Um, and a lot of the vaccines that we are having since the, you know, we've had vaccines for a very long time, but the I think since like 86 or the you know, 86, I think they started putting us on a different regiment. Um, and that's causing a lot of autoimmune issues with people. And, you know, I'm seeing kids who are like so sick that I'm like, you're like, how do you get this sick? Like, you can't get that sick. Like, sure, a couple people, you know, can have a problem here and there. I see, I'm seeing children in my clinic who can't speak, who have developmental issues, stuttering. Um, and they're from vaccine injuries, um, straight up, you know, and if you want to say that's that, that, you know, who knows, I wasn't there when they got vaccinated. So I really can't say, but when a parent says, got a shot or the flu shot the other day, and it came home and had a fever and then it never spoke ever again. And this is how things have been going for the past four years. And you sit there as a I'm unhinged. I can't sit here quiet and calm anymore and be like, yeah, everything's cool. Cause it's not, it's super messed up. And, you know, people need to know that I'm here for them for that. And I make amazing results. I've had some really uh, uh, miracles that I've witnessed in the past 10 years. Um, and I, I thank, you know, my patients for trusting me in times where, you know, there's absolutely no help, hope, you know, I see, most of my patients have spent could could spend anywhere in between five thousand dollars and one hundred and twenty thousand dollars before they got to me, and they've spent between their time between five and thirty doctors is the most I've ever seen a patient come in or like something like that. So, you know, the statistics out there and the extent of the damage that is being done is actually it's it's hideous. It's evil. There's sixty thousand chemicals cause cancer that are legal in this country. They make about two to 5,000 new ones each year. Now, at this point, one in four cancer rate. It's insane. Unheard of. The autism rate through the roof. I mean, some of these numbers that we're seeing, you know, I'm not one of those people who's like a, a numbers person. I'm not a gimmicks person. I'm what I see kind of person. And what I see is is causes me to lose sleep. It's it's insane. I think that a lot of the need for detoxification is just, you don't need to be sick anymore in these day and days. The need for detoxification, uh, this is the future. I might be a little ahead of my time and slightly a little unhinged, but every great scientist is a little crazy. They thought Albert Einstein was crazy and now everybody loves him. Um, so this is really, it's really important to, to think about this take take note um so i think the one thing that we can all do is start to work on our hygiene because hygiene is a really big part of detoxification and like i always say uh to start to detox you got to stop putting the crap in you know you just got to stop putting the stuff in so in our life you know there's simple things like washing your hands don't wear shoes inside. You walked all over with shoes. You walked in a bathroom with those shoes. You're going to walk on the carpet in your bedroom. You're going to put your feet up on the coffee table where you drink off of with your shoes that you've walked in the streets. And being born and raised in New York, you know, like those shoes came off as soon as I walked in the door, you know, um, you know, because it's gross. Um, so those things are like so imperative. Changing your pillows, examining your mattress, uh, throwing out your toothbrush. There's just like so many things that like you can examine and work on without spending any money for free, which is really a, a benefit to a lot of people. Um, 
So it's really easier said than done. Um, and like I always say, it's about bioharmonizing, not biohacking. Stop trying to rip off the Band-Aid. We need to modify the terrain of what is going on in, in, our, in our bodies slowly so we can create new cells, new information, new places for our body to connect to. Because right now, if you need to detox, your body can't connect. There's pathogens sending wrong messages. There's pathogens taking away your mineral balance and your vitamins. So the human condition thrives on the microbiome and the communication between the brain and the gut access. Most of our neurotransmitters are made in our stomach. Not like, again, my favorite number, 95. I should have a jersey number, 95. 95% of your serotonin made in your stomach. You'd think it's made in your brain, but it's not. It's made in your stomach. So I want to talk about <clears throat> the major immune pathways. Um, and I think that it will be cool to talk about it on a scientific level. So we have an immune thing going on, an invader in the body, and you have T1 and T2 helper cells. So we live in a TH2 dominated state. So TH2 is usually rised. So TH2 is involved in histamine, allergies, parasites, which I find on about 90% of my patients, mold, stress, caffeine, and lack of uh, sleep. So then that's up, T1 goes down and you're, you're weak. You don't have enough. And T1 is bacteria, viruses, and yeast for the most part. So as T2 goes up and everything is worried about that, all of these other things come right on in and your immune system starts to get weakened. Now, as T2 goes up, I just might get a little crazy, I might lose some of you, T17 comes in, and as that goes up, that brings up all kinds of other issues, and you'll have a harder time even fighting the other T1 issues, such as bacteria, virus, and yeast. When T17 is high, it brings up the autoimmune destruction of your body. So literally, inflammation, in the simplest sense, causes your body to mark your own cells, put them aside, cause swelling, put protein in your blood, which protein is the last thing you want in your blood, because that's bad, bad, bad. And then you have this, this issue, this high level of inflammation or symptom. Um and this autoimmune destruction with the T17. There's also something called T regulatory cells. And this is a great point on why people shouldn't be treating themselves even with the simplest things. So T regulatory cells, they regulate. <laughs> no one was really creative about making that one up. So they regulate the immune system. And if these T, -T regulatory cells are low, you need more vitamin D and maybe some fish oil and some, some other things. But if you're high, you need more glutathione. So if you don't know where you stand and you're taking vitamin D and you get worse, you could have a balance with your T regulatory cells and you don't need vitamin D, you need more glutathione to handle the vitamin D. Um, so this is just like one of those scientific nuances where it's really important to realize that you can't treat yourself. It's ridiculous. And especially if you're treating yourself and you're getting worse, it's time to go see so like I said, some people who start taking vitamin D, they start to get sicker, they get worse. And you know, when you're looking at like a cabinet full of stuff, the least likely culprit is the vitamin D. You're like, oh, this is the good one. Medical doctors give this one too. <laughs> um, and if you don't know what glutathione is, it's for phase one and detoxification of the liver. Um, which is involved in methylation, which is your body's ability to detox itself, which over time you can really, really hinder uh, through chronic issues. Now, one other weird science thing. So if all of this is going on and T2 is high, T17 is going crazy, the T regulatory cells are out to lunch, you have what's called NF kappa B, which is a cascade that's when it's turned on will cause over 300 inflammatory pathways. It will imbalance your hormones. It will imbalance your body. The less we have of this, the further our bodies are going to be eating themselves. So let me ask you this. 
I know we've been talking for a little while. Is any any of these things mentioned by your medical professionals? I just want to know. Somebody when I when this is posted, like, comments, subscribe, talk to me. I want to hear some answers because I don't think they have. So what are some causes of the need for detoxification? Well, we have all kinds of medications, vaccines, we have all kinds of metals and toxins. The American diet is horrendous. We're seeing new um levels of produce, the new appeal thing and glyphosate. And it's getting like crazy. Like you don't need extra than glyphosate, glyphosate plus, plus the appeal. And this is why you got to go see Marlene's because they've got the best flipping produce in town. The best mangoes I've had um, also raw milk. One of the, the, one of the only places local to get raw milk. It is one of the coolest things if you could tolerate milk. Um, so the first thing is make sure we're getting high quality food and then to determine what is high quality food for each individual. But then we have Lyme, Lyme co-infections, bacteria, mold, viruses, stress, metals. These are causing huge imbalances to the T1, T2, T17, T regulatory, and NF kappa B. And then once all these things become chronic, like I said earlier, it's biofilms. And then foods, you control what you put in your mouth. Um, I'm the messenger, don't be mad, but a lot of people are throwing coffee in their body and they're like, I'm not addicted to this. It's just one cup, bro. It's just one cup. And guess what? It's messing with the whole thing. It's causing reactions. It's causing your body to be the best it could be. And all of these things are stress, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. And another thing that we didn't talk about, which I should probably do a whole other speech on is emotions. And in Chinese medicine, which applied kinesiology was derived from 5,000 years of successful usage of this. Um, so these are not new things. They're just getting better. Um, the tears, your eyes don't cry, your organs will for you. So like I said, we're in this kind of alchemical meltdown right now of stress and pathogens and our, our leaky gut, which is the primary issue. 80% of my patients, it's that's like the problem that we need to spend the most time on is this leaky gut, you know, the toxins, the metals, the physical, mental, the chemical, all these things that they're just all around us. And we, we need to integrate them and we need to connect to people who can help make sense of it. So this all causes serious cycles of inflammation, decreases the body to obtain homeostasis, and then things get worse and you have symptoms. So there are many herbs and supplements you can use for your to help your body with uh, methylation and detoxification, just so your body can be ready for it. Um, one thing that I like is Regenerazyme Heart uh, Supreme make something called Vidanga that helps with methylation. And I have really good success with that. Um, I really like Vidanga because it's a single herb, um, no binders, no filters, organic, artisanal, and it's encapsulated um, in a very sensitive way with just vegetable caps. So, you know, all of these things are very uh, great products that you can enhance your body's just basic needs and functions um, of the of the system. Um, I'd like to reference something that I, I did um, a couple, uh, maybe a year or two ago, we did the, the 10 commandments of detox. And I think this is really, uh, capitalizing on it. So I kind of want to make this all digestible in kind of one felt swoop right now to kind of tie most together. So the 10 commandments of, of detox identify things are not okay, or maybe you just want to be better than you've ever been. Number two, stop putting the junk in. Number three, let food be medicine. Find what you can eat and eat what you should eat and eat healthy. Do the best you can. Drink and clean and bathe and bathe uh, in clean water. Aqua True, Berkey, you know, don't trust plastic bottled junk. You got to kind of do it yourself these days. Um, you got to exercise. You might need to uh, do some detox pro uh, things like sweating out, sauna, uh, coffee enemas, which are amazing. And I know it's like crazy to put some, 
butt, like you drink a cup of coffee up your butt. But the reality is, is the alkaloids of the coffee go up your sigmoid colon into the hepatic portal veins all the way up to your liver and gallbladder, and the alkaloids of the coffee squeeze them, and you produce glutathione, which is your body's number one detoxification antioxidant. So you're enhancing the drainage these pathways, you're creating more antioxidants naturally in your body which is absolutely awesome. It's, it's, it's just a thing. If you're going to do this, definitely stop by Marlene's and get some mold-free coffee. Don't do it with regular coffee. Um, remove as many chemicals from your life as possible. Get as much testing as you can done. Go to an AK doc, go to a functional doc, get some labs, whatever. Supplements are a big part. And also not, the last one, examine your relationships. Examine your work, home, and uh, recreational relationships. It's very important. Um, I treat many patients successfully with labs and without labs. A couple of things I like are um, oat tests. And oat test stands for organic acid test. I get it through Great Plains Lab, which is fantastic. They are basically, organic acids are metabolism breakdowns of your body's metabolic pathways. So, the evaluation of these downstream metabolic pathways will kind of not tell you so much the presence of pathogens, but kind of tell you that, hey, if you have or a fungus, that there is in, an enhanced level of acid aldehydes. Or, hey, like if you have a mold or a fungus, you might be more sensitive to oxalates or oxalates acids, which oxalates are kind of a counterintuitive food group to not eat because they're greens leafy greens, which we're told are healthy. Uh, but, you know, downstream with people with metabolic pathway issues and mitochondrial dysfunction and yeast, it can be extremely, extremely not healthy. So, you know, it's really let food be the medicine, but figure out what food is the medicine is a, is a, is, a, is definitely a, a part of this. Um, so organic acid testing is really easy. You can, you know, I can send it to people's homes all over. Uh, and you get nine panels through this of metabolites, of understanding neurotransmitters, metabolite pathways, vitamins, amino acids, what your liver and glutathione is doing. It, it's beyond worth it. Um, I, I see tons of people, and it's great to have the feedback of the Applied Kinesiology Manual Muscle Testing, and to see what things are on paper so that when things get better and you give the patient another lab, you can say, hey, you feel better. The labs correlated with our findings. Now the labs also look better and this works. So it's just a really great thing to have something like that. A, a serious uh, patient who you want to help detox. If you want to be as specific as you can and we have these tools, why not use them? Um, also, for hormones is the Dutch test. It'll give us a look at really what's going on with the hormones. Uh, and it's beautiful because it give, it's throughout the day. It's not just a, like a blood test. Okay, this is a snapshot of the moment. The Dutch test is throughout the day. So you see you're waking and falling asleep levels of cortisol, which gives you insight to, like I said, the adrenals. Um, and it helps you monitor so many things. And there are so many women living with irregular female reproductive issues that I don't think they know they're living with it because they told it's like kind of normal and just go on birth control. Um, PMS, estrogen dominance is huge. You can't touch a receipt these days without worrying about getting uh, estrogen. <laughs> um, I also like regular metabolic, regular metabolic panels. You know, I, uh, ev everything is there for its purpose. Nothing I will say is the best. Maybe I'll say applied kinesiology is the best because I've helped so many people with it. But the other stuff is just stuff and they're tools to get to a point. One other test that has some level of level of controversy, some docs don't love it, is I do some hair mineral analysis. Um, and it's kind of a cheaper way to get into some testing, but it's also a great kind of, way for some people who need to see some things on paper to determine what's going on uh, with them. And if the bloods say the same thing, your, your regular labs say one thing, 
The hair analysis says the same thing. The oat test says the same thing. The Dutch test says the same thing. Your applied kinesiology manual muscle testing says fix the same thing. We're treating with an utmost level of confidence. And I can't say many other doctors have that level of confidence or have that ability. Um, so um, that about wraps it up. Um, I am open to questions if anyone wants to ask questions. I also have a ton of questions from my followers, but I want to take everyone's questions on this platform first if they have any questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Bland. Oh, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, the Gerson, Gerson protocol is based on coffee enemas. Yeah, Gerson is used to treat a lot of cancer patients and very chronically ill people um so i think that's that's a great a great thing to to note what happened here am i still here yes you are uh, okay cool uh okay so gerson absolutely great i've treated many uh cancer patients uh in the past 10 years and have had good success um and i think that uh gerson therapy is a uh, is a a very very cool thing for people to do um the question let, i'm going to look into the questions here oh i have this thing okay cool cool all right have you heard of trs metal detox using zeolite uh haven't heard of it hate zeolites hate a lot of binders um i hate zeolite i hate clays uh i hate colloidal silver uh, these things are what I call Trojan horses. Um, I tell you what I will like at the end, but a lot of these binders that people are using are causing toxins to come in because the clays sometimes, and sometimes these things, even shilajit, all certain things that you think might be good for you are causing greater levels of detoxification. Why not use a binder that's not going to put any toxins or actual you know, metals in your body. So if you want to detox, I would suggest something like Takasumi Supreme. Um, that does metals and chemicals. It's really good for the stomach. Smilax Supreme is uh, an endotoxin and myotoxin binder. So there's a lot of better things that you can do. Um, and there are some other things that if you DM me, uh, talk about, but I, I definitely uh, would avoid whatever you're referring to um next oh she sent a link thank you for sending me a link i'll look into it but i highly advise against it um will you be able to next question will you be able to see if the body is affected by mold with kinesiology and the answer is absolutely yes you can totally see many things i have a testing kit that's actually uh right here and it's full of different metals microbes full of different foods and hormones um that will determine what's going on in your toxic load so yeah you can find a lot of information and actually the body has a couple of uh, points in kinesiology, specifically in CRA, contact reflex analysis, that are actually mold, fungus, and yeast points. So I think that's a great question. We could definitely uh, look further into that if you're interested. Uh, let me scroll down. How does this Do we have a work? question? Go ahead. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Do you have a phone number where a person could contact you if they wanted to make an appointment to come and see you that uh, someone who doesn't have a computer? Of Is there course. any way other than your book? Can you give that? Oh, do you mind? Okay. Of course. I'm going to, I'm going to say it out loud and I'm going to type it in the message. Box. My phone number at the <laughs> office, 253-302-3131. That's 253-302-3131. And I got to let you know, I love patients who don't have computers. So give us a call. I'd love to talk to you. Um, okay. Uh, is Dr. Are you in Tacoma? I am in, in Fearcrest. Yeah, I'm in, I'm basically in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. I'm in Fearcrest across from the golf course. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's nice thank to meet you. you today. I hope to hear from you soon. <laughs> okay. Bye, Mary. <laughs> um, thank you. Is Dr. Glass office in Federal Way? Uh, no, I'm in Fearcrest. So we, we just got all that. So you got my number. And um, for those of you who haven't heard, if you want to contact me, either online or not online, it's drryanbland.com or you can find me at Instagram at Dr. Ryan Bland or give me a phone call, 253-302-3131. Would love, love to hear from you. And again, everybody listening, if you are interested in my services and you're not sure if you want to make an appointment yet, I give 15-minute discovery calls. It could be a video call or a phone call or it could be in office. Absolutely your choice. Um, that way you know what you're getting yourself into and you can meet me face to face on a little bit more of a personal level, which I think is really cool. Um, is there any more questions? I'd love to answer a couple more. Okay, Don't be cool. shy, folks. Bunch of questions uh that I'll go that I'll just uh ramp through and when I get tired, I'll stop. I don't want to answer all of them because it's gonna be too long. Um so here we go. This is the first question that I got from my Instagram and my uh, fan base over here. What are the reasons for cherry angiomas? I believe that it's estrogen dominance. It's usually a heavy viral or fungal load. I usually like to think environmental sensitivities, liver detox. I actually looked this up and there is a study uh, in 2015 that showed a correlation with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, Bell's palsy, reason and cure. Uh, I recently, I see, I, before COVID, it was a lot of Lyme co-infection after COVID. I've seen so, a lot of people with some COVID face paralysis. Um, you know, Bell's palsy is sudden weakness in the muscles and half of the, sometimes it's due to a viral infection. It rarely co is caused more than once. And it's not usually permanent, but I've seen it be somewhat permanent in some people. Um, it's due to the facial nerve um, that gets larger due to inf inflammation. Um, there could be an emotion or a toxin related. This is always possible. Um, I got a good question. I like this one. Does stomach acid kill collagen? Um I'm on a supplement, a collagen supplement. Um, before I go to the store, I want to know if I should do it. I think collagen is a pretty good supplement. Uh, I don't know why many people would need to supplement it if you're eating the correct diet. Um, if you're using collagen for anti-aging purposes, I think your time and money could be spent on kind of cooler things like a NAD plus gold from Quicksilver Scientific or, you know, doing something fun like going on vacation and just feeling young again. Um, here's one that I see a lot. Chronic ear infections in three-year-olds um, usually has to do with fungus and mold. Uh, chiropractic, usually uh, C2 body right. Um, somebody asked me for recipes. Um We'll, we'll skip that one. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. How to detox my toddler from heavy metals and parasites. Um, I think every, basically before I answer going forward, you know, if you're having an issue, you should go see a doctor. These are just guesses that could be good. Um, what's interesting about what I do in applied kinesiology as you muscle test, you might not get the answer that you want so if you think somebody has parasite you know i had a patient come in i have a mold i have a mold i have a mold and i find no mold in a parasite their body wants to get rid of the parasite first so i just want you to take what i say with a grain of salt and realize the best thing to do for these things is to go to a doctor especially if we're talking about a toddler <laughs> okay so the best way to detox your toddler from parasites heavy metals takasumi is extremely safe and black walnut. This is actually safe for moms who are pregnant and breastfeeding because if your toddler has it, I don't know, you probably have it too. Um, sauna or steam room, sauna. Prenatal vitamins, uh, Regenerazyme heart or thorn prenatal is pretty good. 
I like Regenerous I'm Heart. Sometimes I really like Vital Guard Supreme. Um, how to give supplements to my kids. Um, I think that it's for kids to take supplements, just as adults in this world that we're all living in. And the best supplements are taken in applesauce. That's how I did it as a kid, or juice. Um, for some patients, I say find a good quality prune juice from Marlene's because it'll help kind of move the drainage pathway along. Um, and it's kind of sweet and will kind of take some of the nasty flavor of the, of the caps of the powders away. Uh, good question. Is Lyme passed through pregnancy? It can. It doesn't always happen. But I think one's healing journey can begin before they're even born within their mother, mother tr troubleshooting these kinds of issues with a, a guy like me. Uh, how to help the body in a moldy house. We kind of touched base on this before. Uh, go see my fungal blog on my website. But if you've got mold in your house, tea tree and cedar oil dis uh, diffusers, uh, dehumidifiers, air doctors. Um, you might need to get an Im emulytics test, which is a $30 test on Amazon that you make your own little Petri dishes and you determine what is really going on. And I have some really awesome patients who they're having a little bit of a health issue and they brought their whole family because I see whole families and they brought their whole families and they got this test and one of their bathrooms was out of the, the, the realm of safe for, for mold. They were on a scale of one to 10, it was 11. Um, so that is really good. Like I said, taking a endotoxin or myotoxin binder like Smilax, Sassandra for the liver, Mirinda for uh, mold and fungus, possibly cat's claw. There are just so many herbs. I believe you use what tests strongest in the patient. And what tests strongest is usually going to negate the pathogen that the patient tested weak on, and you will decrease the reactivity. Can a one-year-old take elderberry? Um, yeah. Yeah. So with kids, I always say one third of what the bottle says. So elderberry is really awesome, uh, antiviral. Uh, it's a good time to grab some for your kids right now. Elderberry Supreme is one of my favorite products, uh, but I'm sure uh, Marlene stocks a similar one. Um, and it's really good that it's um, a tincture. So you don't have to worry about breaking so, um I'm going to skip that question. Recommendations for trauma and emotional clearing. This is something that I'm glad to bring up. My favorite thing is neuroemotional technique. Uh, I hate abbreviations. People call it NET. There's so many abbreviations these days. Like I don't like somebody, somebody said um, ASD to me and they were talking about autism. And I was thinking about a heart disease called an atrial septal defect. So it could get a little crazy. So emotional clearing is really important. NET works on breaking down. It's not like talk therapy or, or anything like that. It's working on mu muscle tests, breaking down neuropeptides in your body, which is kind of what Pavlov created. Pavlov was a famous scientist who created classical conditioning. And he rang a bell and fed the dogs. And then he'd ring the bell. And then the dogs would drool. So a lot of our reactions to life are from building these schemas and neuropeptide relationships. Neuroemotional technique will break that down. And you could, I have patients get up and they're like, they're like, oh my God, that was like a year of talk therapy in like two minutes, even though they might not necessarily say many things. Um, nightshade sensitivity. How do I support the adrenals? Nightshades, um, tomatoes, potatoes, egg pan, uh, uh, eggplant, paprika, goji berries, potatoes, etc. Spicy stuff. Thera Supreme is really good at reducing the load. Um, Tulsi is really good for the adrenals. Um, and I think that that's, that's pretty good for that question. Uh, I get a lot of these questions about uh, how do I detox from swimming in a, in a pool? Uh, I think that uh, glutathione is really great and some uh, alaria, which is trace mineral uh, support, iodine support, great for the thyroid. Um, and it's really good to detox uh, 
different chemicals and um, it's good against radiation. Uh, what is the most accurate test for parasites? Test to confirm parasites. Okay, all right. Uh, like I said, the most sensitive test is the muscle testing. It get you get to a point of four to five percent accuracy. A blood test or a stool test can can miss things. Um, one of my good friends and colleagues, Dr. Noah Leibowitz, recently took a stool test, chopped it in half by the same piece of poop, and sent the poop to the lab. Both both samples, same same draw. The lab came back with two different things. And this is why I like applied kinesiology. They did this with MRT tests where they got two different things and you live and you learn and you move on. Um, I like the oat test because it shows you the metabolism breakdown and then you confirm it with the reactivity of the muscle test. So the, the, the muscle test tells you how reactive the person is. You can use different things to figure out the priority of the parasite. But if you're thinking that you have a parasite, you do, that you probably do. Um, just got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, starting an autoimmune protocol diet. Should I be detoxing? That I would love to talk with you further. DM me. That is worthy of having a conversation. I have helped so many uh, get off of their medications and fight Hashimoto's for the past 10 years. I consider it one of my specialties. Uh, and if you really want to kick this thing, let's get boogie in. Um, but there's just like not enough information um, in that question for me to adequately steer you in the right direction. The best thing to do is to find a guy or a gal like me, person, and work with them and to figure out the root of the thought traumas and toxins that have caused the hot. Um, I know that's not the answer that you wanted but it's a good answer. Um, should you be detoxing? It depends. It really depends where your body's at, where your adrenals are at. Yeah, you should be detoxing, but I think the first thing we need to do is open up the pathways to make sure things can come out. Because if you detox and you're constipated and things are backed up, that's not good. And once you're constipated, the parasites will make you more constipated and lay eggs. And that's how they work. There's two kinds of parasites. They can either constipate you and lay more eggs, or they can cause you to have serious diarrhea. Like Giardia is an example. And I've been there, and you don't want to go there. <laughs> um, next question. Five favorite vitamin E supplement. Go to Marlene's and get some raw. Organic butter, vitamin E, get it in your food. Stop messing around. Um, what kind of under the sink or countertop aqua true? Should I get alkaline? Um, it doesn't matter above, under alkaline. Stop drinking alkaline water. This is the silliest thing people are doing. Uh, your stomach and your immune system have a pH of three for a reason. It helps you live your life, it helps your immune system. Do not put something in your stomach to alter your pH without the guise of a doctor. Moving on. A favorite omega, I like Nordic Naturals. Um, best calcium source, bone broth. If you can stomach uh, some uh, small fish with the bones, honest, it's just not for me. I'll do the bone broth all day. Um, Somebody says they're having a hard time breaking off of sugar. I hear you. You're addicted. We get addicted to these things. Mentally, physically, it can be hard. Um, fungus, parasites, these bacteria, they crave the sugar, and they make you crave the sugar. So you have to deal with the infection, which is the root cause of these infections, is causing the dysbiosis to help your body prepare and be ready for this. Um bad respiratory cough and a toddler. Uh, best thing for a toddler would be usnea supreme, which is really good for coughs. For adults, I would use woad, which is a capsule, or you could use both, obviously. Um, 
Some people do well with a little bit of NAC and vitamin C. Um, top causes of histamine issue, food sensitivities secondary to infections that are causing leaky gut. Leaky gut junctions open up and things just go right on through and the inflammation goes crazy. I'm going to do a couple more and then cut it off. Uh, gallstones, how to dissolve them. Uh, bodyguard Supreme. Uh, classically used for gallstones, um, you can do a, a bigger dose than uh, it says on the bottle if you're having a hard time. But if you've got gallstones, it's time to call the doctor. <laughs> uh, yellow eyes, always liver, jaundice, liver support, cassandra. Um, you can get these from different infections as well, which is what I'd look for the root of them. Um, somebody asked, should I take folate? Um, I was looking on the Pure Encapsulations website and I saw that it was synthetic. Uh, all vitamins are synthetic. That's why I really love Supreme Nutrition and predominantly use a lot of their products. Um, all vitamins are synthetic. They're made overseas from GMO bacteria and fungus. Um, if you need folate, uh, try some liver, beef liver. That would be the best. Uh, I get this question all the time and it's like, you know, what do I eat for breakfast? Uh, Grass-fed beef bacon, smoothies. Uh, you can have some A2 grass-fed raw yogurt with some fruit or just some fruit. I think those are really good options that are good for a lot of people. Uh, somebody, let's skip that. Uh, how to treat dermatitis. What is ha Okay, so... What is happening in your skin is a reflection of what's happening in your gut. I see a lot of patients with skin issues. So the imbalance of microbes in the gut can cause all of these issues in skin. So it's important to find the cause of the toxins so the skin can clear up. All right, let me find one more good one, and that's going to be it. Uh, continue, continue. Uh, let's do these last two. So cholesterol, uh, best thing is, uh, Regenerazyme heart to help with cholesterol. Uh, also Vidanga Supreme is good to help your HDL and that ratio. Tulsi Supreme will help your adrenals give more energy to your heart for your heart to heal. Uh, in horrible seasonal depression where this is a big Washington, um, you know, you need your, uh, Fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, um, to really to really help with that and fix whatever is going on in the gut. Um, I think that is that is it. That was a lot. I got a lot more, but I'm good. <laughs> There's a lot of questions. All right. Is everyone anyone there? All right. Well, I wanted to. Thank everybody for being here with me today and spending all this time with me. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure educating. If anybody would like to reach out, please give me a message at drryanbland.com or give us a call. I'd love a call, 253-302-3131. Thank you, everybody, and have a great night. Thank you. Elizabeth, are you there? No? Okay.